Um, cool. Let's move on to the next question here. Um, what are the benefits of steam slash nebulizers? Let's talk about steam and nebulizers. That was me putting that in. Are steam molecules too big versus nebulizers to get to the folds? And you'd mentioned in the live stream, there's some new research on that. I've, you know, people used to steam all the time and I heard for many years, well, the steam's really not getting to the vocal folds where a nebulizer, a good nebulizer can. So what, um, do you have any yeah thoughts on that and recommendations? What kind of nebulizers, you know, elaborate? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I've i seen plenty of research that all says exactly what you just said on that last slide, that the steam particles are too big to actually be beneficial. The nebulizer ones are smaller. They're beneficial. <clears throat> I mentioned in the live stream that the uh, saline itself is more chemically similar to the mucosa that coats your vocal folds than pure water. And that's again, why that saline solution is a better thing for you. Um, you know, uh, the nebulizers that are sold over the counter, uh, they, you can get expensive ones that run you $200. Uh, if you want something that's affordable for most singers, you're probably going to end up on amazon.com and you're going to order some that are made overseas where unfortunately they're not well regulated. And so, they work if they have good reviews. I've had, I've tried some, I've had plenty of clients just grab one that had good reviews and they work, but I don't have any like set name brands to give you because unfortunately, even the one that I have that I like, I went through two different ones. Uh, the first one I didn't like at all. The second one works great. But then when I went to go send somebody the link, it's no longer available. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to get on there and look for reviews. I mentioned in the live stream, I usually say look for a thousand reviews or more on those things because enough people are buying them you can find the products that have those thousand reviews because when you're in the 100 200 reviews you could be getting fake reviews and not knowing exactly what it is that you're getting uh, and so you make sure that you look through there and i always like to click on the five stars and the one star reviews sometimes as you're reading through the one star you'll be like that sounds like user error uh, <laughs> or if you see 21 stars that all say it worked two days and quit working eh, there's a good chance maybe it's not um so I would check on over there uh, to look for those. Uh, in general, you know, though you could still use the steam if you are like thinking that you're having an allergy attack or bronchitis or something and the heat feels good to you. The steamers, like I used to use, like you uh, were saying, I mean, I had one that I took with me everywhere when I perform. I used to sit in my dressing room with it on my table. And uh, it was the one that went over my nose and my mouth. And the steam in my nose would definitely break up any nasal congestion that I had. So I don't know that we want to throw them away completely for people who do have nasal congestion issues. But you would just instead combine it uh, with the um, nebulizer so that you got both the uh, nasal cavity benefits and the vocal fold level benefits by using both devices. Yeah, that's great advice. I mean, I've been in on so many stages, backstage theaters. Uh, the environment that you have to sing in is constantly changing as well. And some some theaters are just brutally dry. And uh, have, being able to have, you know, some steam, you're not supposed to, well, this is what I was told. Again, I'm not quoting research here, but I've found it to be true as well, that that when you steam, um, that it it is going to affect your nasal passage, your pharynx, it's going to get into the lungs. Not, does it really get into the lungs? I mean, I, I, I'd say, I can't say for sure. But you're definitely going to feel it in the pharynx. I mean, if it's not getting to the vocal folds, it's, you know, it's, it's attaching itself in the mouth and the nose and the pharynx. It does feel good, especially if you're feeling dry. But um, I've also heard that it's probably not a good idea to do that immediately before you sing. Um, because if you're change in the environment your body is going to readjust to that you know so if you if you're doing that you know 10 15 minutes right before you go on stage it, you might have just a normal adjustment happen whereas if you do it maybe an hour to an hour and a half before then your body is going to accommodate itself again at least that's the advice i was following and i found i found worked well yeah i think that's a good point i mean yeah i mean you know how it is to be inside and walk outside and you breathe in that cold air, you feel that. Well, it's not the same, but if you had a lot of hot air and you step onto a 68 degree stage, there's a difference. It could impact your singing. Yeah, so so be cautious with anything you do immediately before you sing, but definitely for um, you know maintaining your vocal health and soothing and taking care of your voice. Um, I, 
I am going to actually that's on my Christmas list. Ah, nebulizer. <laughs> A new nebulizer, yeah. Cool.